This is the Russian dynamite Masha Slamovich. Becca here. This is not America's sweetheart Davian. It's Billy Starks and the super fly guy Trayvon Jordan. This is the fly side fly Jalen Brandon. Hardcore princess Jules Malone. Hi there, this is the bubblegum princess Alexia Nicole. This is the Brazilian Wonder Woman Christy Jane. This is the baddest black belt Chennai Kai. This is Kid Bandit. The smash hit Joel Bateman. This is Robin Renegade. Cody Hawk. Brutal Bob Evans. And you are listening to Wrestling With Entertainment, one of my favorite podcasts in the whole wide world. This is Top Tier Bovi, professional wrestling's longest reigning participation champion, and you're listening to Wrestling With Entertainment. Hello, 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 and welcome to the show. It's Wrestling With Entertainment, the only audio experience on the web today. The trusted choice for us to view all your favorite wrestlers every Tuesday and Wednesday on YouTube and CastBox, sponsored by Rogue Energy and Play Out One Coffee. I am, of course, your host, James J, and it is a great day for wrestling, because we are wrestling with Top Tier Movie. <laughs> Hi, how are you? How's it going today? Big wow, I'm Bovi. Yes, you are. And where is the big wow, big wow <laughs> next? <laughs> where am I big wowing next? Well, the the places that you could see me big wowing next. Um, the place I'm big wowing next is actually at my wedding uh, mm-hmm. coming up. And... Uh, after that, um, at a Dream Slam Wrestling and uh, on December sixteenth, right. I'm taking a. I'm taking most of the rest of the year off because uh, I'm getting married to a uh, wonderful, fantastic, beautiful woman, and uh, I'm just going to try to keep myself healthy for the ceremony <laughs> and injury free. You don't want um, black and blue and bruises uh, in the wedding pictures. Exactly. I would like, I, I already look uh, a mess enough without being beat up. So I'm just going to, I'm just trying to keep myself free and clear. And then right after that, I should resume my normal uh, headlock duties. And not to mention, you know, that's probably, the, uh, your wedding is probably the best opportunity to recap so at the participation championship. That's true. I'm hoping to recapture my championship uh, by December 3rd, my wedding day. <laughs> Hi, uh, and where can we find uh, both, all things Bovi on social media and merchandise? Um, you can find me on Instagram uh, at uh, Bovi underscore top tier. Uh, I'm on Twitter, refusing to call it X, at Steve Bovi. And that you don't don't look for me on Facebook. I don't have I don't have a wrestling <laughs> social media presence on Facebook. Just my normal boring one. <laughs> okay. And uh, merchandise. Oh, uh, merchandise. Uh, well, I do have a pro wrestling tease, uh, uh, Steve Bovey. Um, but for the most part, if you're going to get one of uh, my tees, you're going to want to come to one of my death matches because that's where I, I sell my death match Bovey t-shirt and uh, stickers. So just keep an eye out for just actually booking me uh, if you want to get my merch, to be honest. Okay. <laughs> and uh, you don't have to go looking for any of those links. All the links to all his social media and merchandise um, will be in the description of the video below, but on YouTube and CastBox. Hey, thanks. That makes that makes it much easier for me. I don't have to do anything. Yes. <laughs> do anything. We make All right. it easier. You go ahead. <laughs> do, do everything else. I'm just gonna sit here, okay? <laughs> do my half of the interview for me too. Well <laughs> <laughs> All right. Um let, let's get into it. Um can you tell us about being uh about the participation championship. Um, <clears throat> absolutely, uh, the participation championship is something that I have. Um, I didn't uh, win it for the first time, but I conceptualized it and believed in myself enough that I just became the champion of participating. 
after that, I carried the belt for nearly three years. And then I got a little overconfident and I decided to put it up as a 24 seven rule title. And since then I've dropped it and regained it several times. So I'm currently the first and fourth, sixth and seventh champion of that belt. <laughs> um, unfortunately, uh, it's a very prestigious belt though. Uh, it's been taken home by Kid Bandit and Brooke Havoc, Pinky Santino of the uh, Fighting Santino School. Uh, currently, my former tag team partner, Jin Savani, is holding the title. But I plan on um, beating her up and getting it back. Well, let's talk about uh, let's start about talk about Kid Bandit and um, uh, Brooke Havoc. I don't I don't think I don't believe Kid actually pinned you. Uh, Brooke pinned you. Uh, uh, Kid Bandit. Uh, she actually pinned me. She hit me with a super kick out of nowhere. And then while she was celebrating, Brooke Havoc hit them with a surprise roll-up, which, as we know, is one of the most dangerous moves in professional wrestling. 100%. So it happened. Uh, Bandit's, uh, Bandit's reign was only a few seconds long, unfortunately for them. Um, but Bandit can hold the, uh, the title of the first person ever to dethrone me of my title, so I think Bandit's okay with that. Uh, they're still in the record books. Right. I love the fact that, you know, um, afterwards there was a graphic that says, congratulate, betray, give food. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> you know what? Wrestlers are always hungry. I don't know a single wrestler. If you, ever, after, if you ask a wrestler if they're hungry and they say no, what they're really saying is, I don't have time to eat. Right. Every wrestler is always, always hungry. If they have a match in an hour, they don't want to eat because they don't look like uh, they want to look uh, bloated in their gear. But they are hungry. <laughs> so that one was a given. Um, and then obviously you dropped it uh, to Pinky. Um, yes. Which I you, love Pink. Which you then regained it afterwards. Um, Outside of a bathroom. Yes, that was in the Don, the famous Don Quixote in Los Angeles. Um, <laughs> that's a that's a very nice venue. It's a club venue, but sometimes they have wrestling there. And yeah, I wasn't even wrestling that day. I was just there to uh, uh, to support some of my friends at East Los Lucha. Um, I was supporting my friend Chris Nasty, who was a uh, that day, I believe he was actually winning their uh, heavyweight title. And then uh, Pinky accosted me and took the belt. And so then I waited for Pinky to uh, get comfy and start to relieve himself at the urinal. And that's when I challenged him <laughs> for my rematch clause. And that's the best place to do it. But it was a very, it was a clean victory. As you saw, we both washed our hands afterwards. So I guess everything's fine. I think the real question here is, was that Shoot or Walking P? Oh, uh, that was Shoot P. I don't think wrestling is real, and we don't <laughs> fake stuff like that. People always talk about wrestling's fake. There's no way that a person like Pinky, a professional like Pinky, would pretend to pee on camera. <laughs> um, I respect that, man. <laughs> I respect this. I respect uh, his attention to detail. And um, obviously, um, the last um, time you defended it was against uh, Jin, um, which you uh, lost the title in a pumpkin patch. In That's right. What was the, like a rock'em sock'em fight? <laughs> yeah, um, I uh, I brought a face punch to a throat punch match, and I shouldn't have done that. Um, she <laughs> she. Uh, the, this is the thing about Jin. This is why I liked teaming with her back when I had a little more, uh, like my evil tendencies were kind of bleeding through and stuff. Is that Jin? Yeah, uh, Jin is dangerous. She's devious. 
and she will always surprise people. I've seen her beat people twice her size, and I'm a beefy boy myself. I've got the biggest legs, and uh, big legs don't scare someone in a punch fight. So Jen just took the belt for me, and that was sucks too because I don't know if you noticed this, but this was on Halloween, my favorite holiday. <laughs> I've, I've actually got a jack-o'-lantern tattoo on my chest, and uh, yeah, but that's what happens, you know, 24-7, anything goes. Now, um, how did the 24-7 rule kind of come into play and, you know, defending the, the, the championship against all of these um, colorful characters, to say the least? Well, I had a few people challenge me for the title over the years. Um, they wanted, they, they said like, hey, show up to this show and I'll beat you for that belt. And I'm like, well, that doesn't sound appealing. If that's the plan, why would I show up? You know? <laughs> but then um, it was pointed out to me uh, by a few people that I could just defend it just outside of the ring. Uh, so that way I could pretty much always be wrestling. Um, and one of those people was Kid Bandit, which I later learned was because they were planning on taking my belt. And then the other one was actually the first person to attack me for the belt, Can't Stop Jamal. Um, yeah. I, ran, I ran into Jamal at the gym because, uh, Jamal also doesn't skip leg day. And Jamal just said, uh, hey brother, why don't you put that belt on the line? And then said something about not eating meat because they're vegetarian and yeah uh but little did i know that it's because they're planning on sneak attacking me with a stop sign uh, uh, okay <laughs> i don't know if you can hear there's a the, yes. the dog is getting excited to have people talking they want the uh the participation championship as well putting the, the, yep. the hat in the ring yeah here, let me uh, let me let me see if I can't uh, get this dog just really fast. Oh, you're fine. All right. Um, I have returned. No. Right. Um, Hopefully, you can uh, cut around that, and I didn't uh, just put like a commercial there. Oh no, you're completely fine. Awesome. Yeah. All right. It's Sorry, where the were we? First time we've had um um guests be joined by their pets. <laughs> <laughs> I love animals, and uh, so I, I, I anticipated at least one animal interference in this. Oh, yeah. Uh, you, you would be surprised how many times I post my door for interviews, and then my dog just breaks the door down. <laughs> to get in. I'm coming in. Yeah. <laughs> Wait, um, can you tell us about your relationship with your tech? partner and bogusly nasty um chris nasty sure um i started wrestling a, it's shoot it's only been just january 6th 2020 is the first time i ever actually stepped in the ring um like before that just uh a few years of amateur wrestling like olympics type stuff but in a wrestling ring, that was the first time. And that's the day I met Chris Nasty and Jen Savani, to be actually. Um, we started training together at Santino Brothers Academy. Uh, we got together when the pandemic started. All the schools shut down. So we actually bought a ring and have it shipped from the East Coast, which this is like you know, we have one of those things where, all right, we're going to be broke for a month because we're all putting together some money to buy a ring. And we kept training. Um, and then we've been uh, we've been friends and uh, we've been fighting partners ever since. Okay. Um, yeah, as, as you can see online, uh, just, uh, just look up Jin Savani and Chris Nasty. Those two are really taking off uh, coming into their own um, they're young and hungry, uh, uh, and they both have a good, like, strong base in lucha. Chris is known as the lucha scumbag, right? So that should tell you something. And yeah, he's uh, he's a very he's he's got a very great super kick, and he knows uh, he knows every arm drag there is. So he is he is that lucha, and he has a fantastic mustache to boot. He does, but I'm gonna say it. 
I have more interesting facial hair than him. Ooh. Like, <laughs> like he, he does have a very, very nice mustache. One of the things I think that I, uh, I, I know he loves the, uh, he loves the attention on his mustache, but I feel like it's such a tragedy that like his mustache gets all the attention when he's also like, <laughs> he's like risking his neck doing some of these dives. And people are like, man, that was just some sweet facial hair. I was like, <laughs> he almost died. <laughs> but you know what? Say la vie. And, uh, you know, that's what you get. Uh, I like to think that he's the Waluigi and I'm the Wario uh, of, of SoCal wrestling. Um, that's awesome. <laughs> I, I don't know who Jin is. Um, Jin's shy guy because she doesn't really want to talk to anybody. Okay. <laughs> so, you know, you mentioned um, you started in January of 2020. Um, if, unless you've been living under a rock, the world ended in March of 2020. That's um, true, yes. So, I mean, just when you're getting started and then everything to stop. And for people that don't know, when they said lockdown, in California, they meant lockdown. Nothing yeah. that was open, like legitimately. Now, if you were driving somewhere and you had to go to the bathroom, you were in trouble because nowhere would let you in to go pee. Like, we were locked down. Right. So, like, you know, being so early in your career and having that happen, where was your headspace in all of that? Well, to be honest... Um, uh, like most wrestlers, I have two jobs, uh, wrestling and another job. <laughs> and, uh, cause, uh, it just, it's just easier to pay the bills that way. Um, in independent wrestling right. and it was a customer service job. And so I never stopped actually being in the public. I had, I was still talking to everyone every day. So it was easy for me to, uh, easier for me than others, I think, to have empathy for what was going on for everybody else. Um, I was getting tested uh, pretty much once a week. And because I was getting tested and Jen and Chris were also getting tested uh, for our jobs, we actually knew we were safe to meet up with each other to train. Um, <laughs> we would mask up and just work out together. So it affected us because we were finally chasing our dreams of getting into the ring, but we didn't, we didn't let it stop us from learning and doing our best. And we just, for us, it was just, what it was really about is that we were also trying to be responsible. Um, right. But, you know, you can only be, you can only do so much, but masking up and testing and when one of us was sick with any symptoms, like, guess what? You can't come today. <laughs> like, you, even if you test negative, you can't come. And, yeah, it was – but I think everyone went through that, right? I mean, I'm sure even you went through something like that during the pandemic uh, where you just had to take any – some some plan that you had just went right out the window, right? Kind of, sort of, yeah. Definitely. Mm -hmm. Now, um – you're allowed to share. I don't have to do all the talking. <laughs> <laughs> it's your show. You can you can be like, yeah, well, I I missed a birthday party and they had a taco guy, and I'm like, oh, that's relatable because the taco guy is amazing. <laughs> well, I'll, well, it will be a mic. Uh, my reply will be a segue into the next question. Sick. Um, let's do. It. So, like, I saw. I was helping somebody move in like 2019, and I drive. We drive past. Um, uh, we're driving through um, Pasadena, and the at the Pasadena uh, Civic Center. I can't remember what the name of it is. There was this gigantic Pikachu in front of the place. Nice. And I Google it, and there was an anime convention right there. Like, cool. And I could not, and it was literally the last day, the last hours, so I couldn't get a ticket to go. So, fast forward one year, 
I get tickets, I'm ready to go to an anime convention, my first one, uh, mind you. And then they say, oh, this isn't happening because of the pandemic. <laughs> yep, it did happen like that for all the conventions. That's exactly what I'm talking about. Now, uh, that being said... I know, were, I know where this is going. <laughs> you were a part of the anti-anime syndicate. <laughs> <laughs> yes, the anti-anime syndicate service. The ASS. And as I told everyone, don't Google the ASS. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, honestly, I was just feeling grouchy that week uh, because um, as I, uh, I told the crowd and I uh, told uh, the, the world online, I read a manga backwards and I got really confused because like, manga, you know, you don't read it the same way you read an American comic. So I got really frustrated. And then I saw that this manga was called um, Dragon Ball. And then I knew there's a Dragon Ball cartoon. And I didn't want to watch the cartoon either because I felt embarrassed that I got outsmarted by a book. <laughs> and so I made it my goal to show up to the anime convention and ruin it for everyone. Now, that didn't go well. I don't know if you know that. I actually got beaten up really bad at the anime convention <laughs> by uh, by Sasuke and some demon with like the, a pig's head. There was just a lot going on. Ash Ketchum hit me with a flying <laughs> elbow. So, but I learned a valuable lesson, which is I was absolutely right to start a fight with a bunch of cartoon <laughs> characters because at least it was a good memory. <laughs> Well, uh, having that all happen, have you changed your stance on anime? You know what? I have. Um, I'm I'm never I'm never one to uh, to shy away from admitting when I'm wrong. Uh, anime is fun. Uh, it's still <laughs> it's still going to be my mission next year to return to the anime expo. I'm really hoping to return next year. And just get some revenge on some of these cartoon characters, but um, hopefully it'll be—I'll uh, be punching them in the face as friends. <laughs> <laughs> you know, the, those old platonic chin locks, as we call them. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's what I'm hoping for. If it doesn't happen, it doesn't happen. You know. <laughs> oh. Definitely, that's coming up in March, I believe. Yeah, I'll, I'll keep an eye out for the uh, for the flyer, and then pull out, and I'm gonna invite myself. Now, um, getting back to uh, you know Chris, and I'll throw Jim in there as well. Um, what is a pet peeve about them that you just don't understand? Something about them that I just don't understand? Yes. All right. Um, see here. <laughs> well, that's a that's kind of a tough one. We uh, our our faction, Better Off Dead, broke up at the beginning of this year over a misunderstanding between me and Chris. Um, the misunderstanding was that Chris was tired of me losing and <laughs> and I really wanted to just. You just keep doing this exact same thing and hopefully start winning eventually. And it came to a point where me and him got into a street fight and he ultimately ended up winning and I haven't actually been back since. Um, but I think, honestly, I don't know. I, uh, I see eye to eye to them with a lot of things. They don't like Mazapan, which is like a Mexican candy that like it's, it's almost like a, it's like a powdered confectionery peanut sugar snack, and they don't like that. They both think it's gross, mm. and that's probably about it. And they don't drink tap water. They think tap water is gross, and I think tap water is just fine because I grew up drinking from the hose. <laughs> so, <laughs> so it's it's like the little things like that. Um, 
other than that, for the most part, we see completely eye to eye. That's like that's why we were a good faction, minus my uh, inability to uh, win matches for a short period of time in at the beginning of twenty twenty three. And uh, and obviously, you know, obviously, there's some um, issues that need to be so resolved between the three of you. Obviously, you know, Jim took the title, and you need to get that back. That's true. Jin Jin does currently hold my belt, but I don't hold any ill will for that. We always wish each other great successes. Um, I'm going to beat her for it, though. That's for sure. I'm going to get my belt back. So I'm not <laughs> I'm not too stressed about it. Uh, I am very very. I feel like weird when I go lay down at night and I don't have the belt next to me. It yeah. feels weird. It feels weird because um, I, I like to wear it in the shower too, so that way, like, I feel like a champion while I'm using my shampoo and conditioner. And I haven't been able to do that ever since she took it. But I feel like once I get my belt back, we'll have like a happy Thanksgiving together, a happy Christmas together, all those things. Definitely. And. They're both in my wedding party, so that would be really awkward if Jin was standing at the altar and she had my belt. And I'm like, can I have my belt? I'm trying to get married right now. <laughs> oh, no. Um, there was a documentary-esque uh, video shot about you. Um, can you tell us about Wrestling Tales? Wrestling Tales, that was actually hosted, it was uh, just a, uh, a project by uh, my friend Natalia. Um, she is uh, she is also in the professional wrestling world. She's, she's trained in Lucha. She is a SAG actress and stunt woman. Uh, she's just a cool person. Um, currently, she's in Chicago. Uh, she's actually, God, she's going to kill me because I can't remember the name. But she's actually doing a production in Chicago right now where there's actually live lucha wrestling in the show. I'll make sure there's a link for that because it's awesome. Uh, but, yeah, she just wanted to do a little project about some of the people she met in wrestling while she was training. And she asked if she could ask some questions and stuff like that. Um, and, it, honestly, like, you can tell <laughs> – if anyone who knows me can tell like which parts of that are really just tongue in cheek and me being sarcastic, because right. <laughs> I was just <laughs> I was, I talk very differently in that than I talk right now. Um, <laughs> but it was a uh, yeah, it was just a little fun thing to do, and um, we got to meet my uh, one of my first rivals in pro wrestling, Johnny Quill. We talked to him too, or she she basically cornered him and like made him answer questions <laughs> about me. <laughs> We can see he's just like, hey, what's going on? Because I just, like, three minutes before that interview, hit him in the head with a kendo stick. Right. And so he's, like, still rattled. And he's like, why, why, what are we doing? Ah, talk about how good I am, Johnny. <laughs> Come on, you know, this is easy, all right? I'll, uh, I'll, I'll give you a, was a liquid death. It's a, it's a sparkling water. Everyone loves them. You'll feel better. <laughs> No, um, you know, going on, you know, kendo stick socks. Um, you do partake in deathmatch wrestling. Um, yes, I love deathmatch wrestling. I'm a deathmatch baddie. Was deathmatch wrestling always in the plans when you started wrestling, or was it something you kind of came into after you got into wrestling? Um. It was always a dream of mine to do uh, hardcore wrestling. My uh, my favorite wrestler as a kid was Mick Foley. Uh, the first book I ever read on purpose that the school didn't tell me to read was uh, Have a Nice Day, uh, Mick Foley's first book. Okay. And so it was always a dream of mine to do some hardcore wrestling. But the thing is, is like it's really hard to go to a school and say, where do I learn hardcore or deathmatch wrestling? And not to like throw deathmatch wrestling under the bus, but a lot of the guys in deathmatch wrestling aren't trained as professional wrestlers. They're right. trained. A lot of them are trained in like mixed martial arts, 
Like, I've seen some guys who've never actually been in the ring and, like, locked up, did a drop-down leapfrog arm drag. But they're jujitsu experts, so if I, like, tried to drop down, he would just choke me out. So I'd have to, like, think of a different game plan. Um, so I didn't really know how to get into it. And then one day I just uh, I just got lucky. And uh, someone really wanted to uh, hit me in the forehead with a gusset. And someone really wanted to hit me in the back with a chair. And you know how these things happen. And then uh, and, uh, Cutthroat Cody uh, and uh, Dr. Redacted, uh, Judge Joe Dredd, Terex, um, these guys have all been really helping me. Um, Project West, when he uh, uh, unfortunately transformed into Beast, um, <laughs> uh, these guys all really helped me out. And... Uh, they got some blood on my face. They got some blood on my hands. And yeah, it's actually everything I wanted it to be. It's very cathartic to uh, to bleed in front of a crowd, uh, to just be yourself out there and have a really great time. You know, because that's that's all deathmatch wrestling is to me is just being yourself and having a really great time. And and uh, I'm really I feel really blessed that I get to do that in front of crowds of people. Is there something? that you've done in a death match or something you uh is there something that you won't do in a death match or something you did do but said never again um i haven't reached anything where i said never again um i have a i, I was blessed with a hard head and uh, a high threshold so so far everything i've done has been okay I would like to avoid. Uh, I'd like to avoid po probably fire or a knife board. Fire because uh, I am getting married and <laughs> I really, I really don't want to come home with like half a beard. My wife already ha is going to have to deal with enough with like my aching knees and back and neck. So I don't want to have to look at like me with like a terrible facial hair or like third degree burns and the knife board. I have to admit to myself, I'm just not that coordinated. Uh, and I know when people take bumps on knife boards, they just get like straight line cuts. I don't think it's going to happen. If I think if I take a bump on a knife board, I'm spending the night in the hospital. <laughs> like I just don't trust me enough for that. <laughs> I trust I trust all of my opponents. I always, I've, I've always feel comfortable putting my body in their hands. I know things will be okay. We do dangerous things all the time, but that one, uh, just you just can't, you can't plan for knives. And those are two definitely good things to make you stay away from, just in life in general. <laughs> yeah, I mean, if it happens, it happens. What are you gonna do if if they, if someone just decides that they're gonna use fire in a match? What am I gonna do? Just tell him, like, actually, I changed my mind. I'm going home. Like, I can't. <laughs> <laughs> like on that one, I'm just gonna really have to hope for the best. Hopefully, I don't have a Mick Foley Terry Funk incident where I get like my back is covered in fire. <laughs> like, just gotta, you know, just trust that everything will be okay and everything will be okay. Or since I mean, since they introduced the fire to the match, put them to whatever is on fire. That's true. That is kind of the rule, um, in a, especially in hardcore wrestling. If you ever see anyone setting up the table, they're probably the one going through the table. Right. Um, but it's not – deathmatch rules are kind of different than hardcore because in deathmatch, half of it is the presentation. I fill up a coffee cup full of thumbtacks every time. Fill it up. And then I pretend to the audience it's just coffee. So they think I'm going to pour coffee on my opponent, but I trick them and I pour the thumbtacks all over the mat. So they get excited twice. And like that's the kind of same thing with fire. You want to show them, I got matches, I got the fluid, and they go, oh, and then you light it. And then, whoa. You know what I mean? Yeah, no, absolutely. I always go back to the Mick Foley Edge match at WrestleMania. Eggs. Oh my God! Yes, 
I love that match. That's the that's the night we learned that Edge was uh, was uh, even tougher than we already thought. The, the one of the first people to do the TLC matches, and it's also when we learned how crazy tough uh, Lita is because Lita took uh, Mr. Sacco with the barbed wire in that match. Right. It was a bloody good time to say the least. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. I love. I. Uh, I didn't. I didn't have to do any homework for for this interview to talk about a little bit about Mick Foley. Uh, uh, TNA only came to California, to my knowledge, once, and they wrestled in Irvine. And I bought a ticket because Mick Foley wrestled on that pay per view. Because I'm cheap, I have some. I will make sure to not buy tickets if I don't have to. That was Bound for Glory, 2009, correct? That sounds right. Yeah, I was there. I was there uh, as well. <laughs> wow, cool. See, you know what I'm talking about. It's Lethal Consequences versus Motor City Machine Guns was like the opener, right? It was a lethal. A was it? A Motor City? I know. I know. I'm pretty sure it was. I remember uh, the the act the, the first match on the card was the Ultimate X and uh, Amazing Red Bomb oh. Band. I think it might have been the uh, the dark match, the pre-show, because I remember thinking, "You guys are idiots if you don't like Jay Lethal and Consequences Creed," because people were people immediately were giving them the business because everyone was big Motor City fans, which I understand. Yeah, it's hard. To, it's hard to not be a fan uh, of Motor City. Like I, I've met Alex Shelley; he's a really nice guy. <laughs> he's like the coolest dude ever. Um, but I was like, why you guys give him the business? And of course, obviously, Consequences Creed went on to become Xavier Woods, Never who was like, oh, you never <laughs> beat RL. Yeah, who's he ever beat? Yeah. <laughs> Ironically enough, we're talking about that show from 2009, which was supposed to be Sting's final match in pro wrestling. And now <laughs> yeah. in 2024. Once again, Sting's final match. <laughs> yeah, that's right. Was was it him and uh, AJ? Who yeah, was AJ. his match? Yeah, that's right. I remember people had the giant, uh, the giant Sting like uh, the huge uh, S T I N G sign in the in the top in the cheap seats. That it was, was so me. big. That was you. That was probably me. Yes. That's amazing. <laughs> well, I guess we met before today. <laughs> like. Um, I, uh, I was the only one smart enough to go by, uh, I, in that, my whole section, I was the only person wearing a British invasion shirt because I was like, yeah, Doug Williams is taking home a belt today. And I was right. Yes, <laughs> <This was>. like, <laughs> I was right. I was like, I, nobody believed in me except, uh, the one British guy who was very drunk, who doesn't remember meeting me. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Doug Williams gets, he didn't get his flowers until way after that. No, uh, I. That's true, and it's like, and I, I'm not gonna pretend like I know everything about wrestling. I didn't know uh, Doug Williams until like the uh, TNA had done their World Cup, what? and so they 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 had the, that they wrestled a team called Speed Muscle, I think it was from Japan. Gosh, we we're really aging ourselves right now by having this conversation. You know that, right? <laughs> <laughs> you're like <laughs> you're like you guys remember this stuff? I'm like, yeah, man, we've been watching forever. Um, so yeah, but yeah, I wasn't even aware of him. He wasn't even on my map because I didn't know, uh, British pro wrestling yet. I just knew of, uh, WCW, ECW and WWF or E, right. uh, until, until like, uh, I was a fully grown man and then I was able to go out and actually look and like, oh my gosh, there's great wrestling everywhere. What a cool planet we live on. Oh yeah. Now, uh. Let's get back to uh, deathmatch wrestling. Ah, cool. Let's um, let's let me ask you, how many graphic tees have you ruined in deathmatch wrestling so far? <laughs> uh, you were talking about my wife who uh, told me I can buy as many graphic tees as I want as long as I get rid of an old one by wearing it in the deathmatch. Yes. <laughs> Well, actually, since we came up with this rule, I've only wrestled in two death matches. <laughs> so 
I was just like, that's why I told everyone you need to book me in these matches, but I've actively avoided getting my face cut up for my wedding. <laughs> so uh, I've only ruined two shirts, but I have about, I'll just, uh, as a spoiler, I have about six shirts I plan on ruining in the springtime, <laughs> but I can't say any more than that. Uh, but yeah, I'm a, uh, for those of you who don't know what he's talking about, uh, that's the, a post I put on social media, begging uh, deathmatch promoters to hire me so I can buy more cheap graphic tees. So I'm allowed because my wife said I'm allowed to ruin shirts and uh, and buy new shirts, but only if I get booked in death matches. And that's called loving and supporting your partner. Uh, that's why I'm marrying this woman in December. <laughs> <laughs> and. Um support looks like if your wife doesn't say that get a new <laughs> wife <laughs> what's some of your favorite graphic tees that you have that i'm ready to ruin that you're oh my god or that you're really, that you're just not willing to ruin give us the give us the tea i suppose is the footage i have I, uh, I, my very first day in wrestling, I wore a Bart Simpson shirt, like with a bunch of like slushies or squishies rather, uh, shirt. It was like a, a Simpsons outside of the Quickie Mart shirt. Oh, yeah. I've had, I have, uh, I wore that. And ever since, because I wore it my first day in wrestling, I still have it. Uh, I've made sure to take care of it. And then, uh, the first time I ever took a bump was in an icy shirt, and I still have that. I was like, I can't get rid of this shirt. Um, I still have uh, an old shirt from my band, Bourbon Missile Crisis. Um, I'm never getting rid of that shirt. Uh, I have one of each version of every shirt I've ever sold as merch. So oh. I protect I protect those. Like I feel like I, I'm not a collector. I don't have a lot of cool stuff. I just have shirts that are important to me. Like I have... Like the, we, I, I played football in like high school a billion million years ago. And when I was going through my stuff, I still have the shirt I wore uh, underneath my pads. And it was just a shirt that says, uh, it says good times on it. And it's just a happy face wearing like an American flag bandana because that's the kind of thing I thought was cool <laughs> when I was a teenager. Because, you know, kids are dumb. <laughs> <So>. <laughs> It sounds very McFoley-esque. Yeah, exactly, exactly. And so I was like, I'm keeping this. Uh, it reminded, it was a, it, it looked like a kind of a redneck uh, dude love type of thing. And so I was like, yeah, I like this. I'm keeping this. Um, but yeah, the, the shirts I like to ruin are going to be ones that you would see teenagers wear. Uh, so it's just a lot of unnecessary swearing and stuff like that. Okay. Because I have that sense of humor still. I'm never going to grow out of that. I, I still laugh at uh, fart jokes. And when uh, you ever hear like when a toddler accidentally swears because they don't know better. Yes. It's one of my, that's one of my favorite things. <laughs> I <can't. laughs> I'm like, yeah, you go, kid. You tell the world. I'm sure... I'm sure most people who would listen to this type of interview can relate. They're just like, yeah, I love it. Oh, yeah. <laughs> like, my kid dropped an F-bomb the other day, and I was cracking up. <laughs> now, uh, now, you were featured in the top 200 LGBTQ wrestlers of 2022. Um, yeah. For number 190. What does it mean to you to be on, um, you know, of one of those lists? I was, I'm, I, I hate to bury myself, but I was surprised. <laughs> uh, I was honored. Um, I didn't come out until my 20s. Um, I, uh, it was something that I always held very private from my uh, upbringing. So when I joined professional wrestling, I was also kind of not sure when I should bring this up. And then we just kind of all talked about it one day. And I was like, you know what? I'm going to speak proudly on all my social media on my debut. 
And then, yeah, I, uh, I was fortunate enough to work a lot of inclusive uh, companies with allyship or just straight from the community. And it was, yeah, it was, it's an honor to be recognized. Um, and there are so many, so many people in our community who are fantastic wrestlers, technicians and body guys and stuff like that. Uh, just all over across the house. <laughs> You're fun character wrestlers. Um, and then of course, like the members of my own faction, uh, Jen is also, uh, she was, I believe she was listed 192. Uh, that's going to be the only time I beat Jen in anything. Um, <laughs> And like, it won't happen again. They're gonna if I make the list again, she's beating me. And um, <laughs> but uh, yeah. And then Chris has been an ally, an outspoken ally. He does not keep his mouth shut uh, when he hears this kind of thing going on. So yeah, it's it feels really good more than to be recognized on a list. It feels really good that the community is supported and to know that. And I hate to say the word safe space because it's like it's so triggering for people to think one of two things like you're being sarcastic or you're being sensitive. But the reality is, is that everyone wants to feel comfortable just being themselves. And I feel like it should be something implicit in anyone's workplace where they can go and feel comfortable like and not harass. Like that's 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 the amount of safe space that I require. Everything else, I don't expect anyone to recognize me, understand, or even support it. If someone doesn't support the fact that I'm queer, that's their business slash problem. But if they tell me I can't, now we now it's our problem, and I'm going to have to sort it out with them. And so it's nice to just feel comfortable because that's what wrestling is. Everyone's just like, eh. and they're the few who don't. Obviously, I don't need to work for their shitty company. <laughs> like, I'll just go do it. I'll go somewhere else. You know, like, uh, I don't need a hot dog and a handshake from you. No. Um, I don't know. I, I don't know how much swearing you usually have. Uh, I, uh, I'm sorry. I, I usually swear a lot. I'm trying to censor myself because I don't want you to have to, like, uh, keep hitting the button over and over and over. You're not going to curse more than Marsha did when she came on. <laughs> Oh, okay. <laughs> and you can say whatever the fuck you want. It's fine. <laughs> I understand. I, I, see, I feel like I could have asked that like a half hour ago. <laughs> but there is, there's no censorship. All right. Good, good, good. Um, I, uh, you, just, you just never, you know. Right. Like, yeah, you, you'd, you'd hate like, hey, listen, I'm sponsored. Please stop swearing on my show. I have... I have bills to pay. Uh, watch your mouth. Like that's and that's the reality. And so, like, I'm not going to do that to you. <laughs> no, no. no, my sponsors do not kill. All right, cool. I love your sponsors. We should we should plug your sponsor. What's your sponsors? Walmart now. Milk Energy and Play One Coffee. Oh hell yeah! Energy and Energy man, you really like to stay awake, huh? Yes, <laughs> I never sleep. Oh, hell yeah. That's my life right there. Right now, I'm addicted to G Fuel, the energy drink. Hmm. So uh, that's not a plug. A, uh, not a plug. You, Remember, drink, uh, drink Rogue Energy. Drink, uh, what's the coffee? Uh, player One Coffee. Drink Player One Coffee. See, look, I just did a commercial for them. And I, I thank you. Greatly appreciate okay. that. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, I've been addicted to G Fuel lately because they released the, uh, they released the, Freddy Krueger and Jason Voorhees and uh, Charles Lee Ray, a.k.a. Chucky, uh, flavors of uh, G Fuel. They don't taste like like a, like a burned guy or a doll. They actually taste like blood orange and, uh, <laughs> and fruit punch. But uh, me and her are at home. We, we found the flavor, the Pac-Man flavor of G Fuel, and it's the best flavored thing. It's a it's a cherry lollipop flavor, and I can't stop drinking them. I I literally I can't wait till I can go to sleep so I have an excuse to get up in the morning to drink another one. I'm like, oh, is it bedtime? <laughs> I already want to go to bed anyways, but now it's like I have a reason to get up. Do you have you drink uh, drank um, Rick Flo's new energy drink? Rule? 
I have not tried Wu. Supposedly, it's supposed to cure all um, uh, ailments and purify your soul. Purify your soul, and it's got Ric Flair's face on it? I'm going to say press F for doubt. <laughs> 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 I wanna, um, I'll say this. He's a famous face, so I'm sure the flavor is good. <laughs> like, but uh, no, no. I have. Uh, I try to stay away from uh, the novelty ones. With like, the only time I've ever been pleasantly surprised is Steve Austin's beer and Chavo Guerrero's beer. But every time anyone else has something, I'm like, this is awful. <laughs> like, oh, Kogan's got an energy drink. Guess what? It tastes like ass. <laughs> like, I'm not drinking this. <laughs> so, Ric Flair's got an energy drink. I'll take your word for it. <laughs> no. No offense. Oh, no. I'm never going to get signed to the Fed because I talked about Ric Flair's and nah, it's fine. It's, it's not <laughs> like, it's AEW I'd, I'd rather never get signed if I don't have to try another <laughs> shitty someone's <laughs> energy drink or drink out there. <laughs> at least if the beer is bad, you're getting drunk. And yeah, then you don't get beat up by Stone Cold for not liking it. Oh man, see, I, I, I'm really glad I don't have to worry about that because it, it's literally good. Yeah. I was like, you good job, El Segundo Brewery, for making a good beer. This actually doesn't suck. And then, like I said, Chavo's. I actually prefer, now everyone give me some heat, I prefer Chavo's uh, beer. It's it's like a light beer, and I'm not really a light beer guy, but it's great after a workout. Now, um, going back to um, the LGBTQ Top 200 wrestlers, um, hypothetically speaking, because the list for 2023 did not come out this year uh, yet, if you are ranked higher than uh, Jin, is she obligated to give you the participation championship back? See, I wish I would have made that the rule, but I don't think so. Um, I think she gets to hold on to it until I beat her one, two, three. Okay. Uh, <laughs> but I will, I will try to argue that if that's what happens. <laughs> All right. Hey, listen. Uh, I have a friend out there who you can hear Tuesdays and Wednesdays sponsored by uh, Rogue Energy. And what the hell is the name of that coffee? Player One Coffee. <laughs> Player One Coffee. What is wrong with me? <laughs> See, kids, this is why you don't try this at home. <laughs> <laughs> you know, it's weird. My co-host had the same problem. He's like Rogue Energy and Player and, and the Coffee. I was like, oh, my God. <laughs> that's the, you know what it is? Is that's just too easy. So my brain's just like, that's not it. It's something hard. <laughs> so that's the problem. You can't have simple things. Right. Yeah. So anyways, uh, as confirmed by Player One Coffee and Rogue Energy, if, I'm, if I rank higher than her on any list, I get my belt back. Hell yeah. You heard it here first. Yeah, this is an exclusive. I'm getting that belt back. I don't know. I, <laughs> like, I, I shouldn't sound so confident because the reality is, is like, I, it's one of those things like the camera's on, the mics are on, so you're confident. The reality is, is I've been bummed for days because what is this? November, oh, Jesus, ninth. She's been champion for 10 days already. Yes. That is so upsetting, <laughs> but I'm going to get it back. I'm confident. This year, mark my words, come come look at my social media, come Christmas Day, and you're going to see something big. You're going to see me holding that belt. I promise you. I'm calling my shot right now. By Christmas, I will have regained my title. And that is um, on Instagram at uh, Bovi underscore uh, top teal. That's right. Oh, also, also on TikTok, I just remembered I'm on. God, I'm the worst at everything. <laughs> <laughs> and TikTok. I don't know what you're called on TikTok. I don't think I, – I, I'm, I'm known as the participation champion on TikTok. All right. Well, I thought, I thought it would be too easy to have the naming convention be the same on every social media. I want it to be hard to find me. <laughs> 
Well, either way, both of the links to both of your social media, or both of those will be in the description, so people will be able to follow you. And check yes. on, so, uh, on Christmas Day, what will happen? Well, I, she, I'm hoping to win it back before then, but I'm just telling you that it's going to be a Merry Christmas with me as participation champion, newly married. I got two cats that I'm going to give. Uh, I'll give them some actual chicken. I'm not going to give them just the treat. I'm going to feed them people food. I'm going to spoil them for a day. All right. And you just you wait. I'm going to have my stocking. My stocking is going to be full of even more stockings. The more stockings you have, the more gifts you can get. High piping cats. Oh my gosh, I love my cats. <laughs> now, um, let's go to Bovie's Bizarre Adventure. You're a pro uh, wrestler that goes up the the roads, and real crazy and bizarre things are bound to happen. Can you tell us yes. a road story that fits that description? Oh my gosh. Um,. Well, man, well, fortunately, uh, I actually don't have that many crazy stories. Probably, the, uh, like, I mean, something happens on some trips. One time we were driving up to Vegas uh, to go uh, support Chris Nasty. He was, he was uh, debuting for FSW in uh, Vegas, okay. and the hood latch came loose, and the hood flew open on the freeway, and we all almost okay. died. Um, and that was fun because, uh, that was, it was actually Chris Nasty's car. So we're like, we're here to see you. Surprise. I got bad news about your car. <laughs> <laughs> and like, we don't know exactly what happened. Uh, the prevailing thought is, is that when I went to go open the trunk, I accidentally pulled open the hood because it wasn't my car Okay, and didn't. And didn't realize it so I, I was like so but i told him by the time i got there i had already gone online and found a replacement hood and ordered it so the next tuesday we were at my place like changing it in the driveway <laughs> <laughs> i don't know that's that's a pretty crazy thing to happen well, i was like sorry man i almost killed uh, myself and my fiance and your wife on the way up here <laughs> but we're here <laughs> Good story. <laughs> that's 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 probably the zaniest thing. Um, well, because you know, most of the time you just like road trips are just fun. Like uh, driving down to because I'm in so I'm in SoCal, so I have direct lines uh, on the five freeway and ten freeway uh, and the fifteen freeway to go to this entire coast. Wow. No, I've been. Like I, I've been to Mexico and I've been up to go up to Nevada, Arizona. That's how you go there. So just like those those three highways connect us to all of the West Coast coming out of the Los Angeles area. So, uh, but they're also like really just smooth sailing. Like I feel like the, the the best road stories are for people in Midwest or back east because they have like the interstate highways where they have the little diners and. That's where they met the waitress who threw the plate at them or whatever. Nah, man, we just, I went to a gas station. That's like my crazy story. <laughs> I went there. I went to there. Oh, my God. They had three different flavors of Doritos. I'm like, hell yeah. I didn't want just – I didn't want nacho today. I want Cool Ranch. And like, that's my – that's our crazy stories. Um, and then we just don't sleep. That's it. That's the – we <laughs> we drive – from uh, from Los Angeles to San Francisco, back to Los Angeles without rest. So it's just like a little little twelve hour turnaround day, and then we just you know that's it. <laughs> like <laughs> our, our 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 danger is did we stay awake? <laughs> our, whose turn is it to drive? <laughs> All right. Um, and if you ever find yourself in Canada, um, that's where the real that's where the crazy stuff happens. Yeah, okay, listen, uh, I actually once drove from Anchorage, Alaska. Most people don't know you can do this. I drove from Anchorage, Alaska back to L.A. I flew into Anchorage and drove back to L.A. So I had to drive through just Canada. I had to drive through the Yukon. Um, and, yeah, Canada's wild. <laughs> like, that's true. 
because I showed up to a hotel at like four in the morning. I was like, hey, listen, there's a blizzard. Can I just hang out here in the lobby? And they're like, oh, we'll just give you a room. And then they just gave us a room and gave us pancakes. And they're like, yeah, just be out by eight. Yeah. So we, so we just took a little nap. And I was like, man, this country is weird. <laughs> and it's like, it's obviously it's not weird. Uh, this is like hindsight being 20. You know, it wasn't weird. What was weird was why are you just pulling up at four in the morning trying to drive through a blizzard? You like oh oh they saw our our, uh, our license plate. Oh they're Californians. They don't <laughs> deal with this weather. I've seen them on get, Saturday Night Live. <laughs> yeah, get inside right now <laughs> because you're gonna die in the blizzard. <laughs> So they were just making sure that they didn't have to like discover us the next day. Right. But yeah, I didn't know that then. At first I was like, but they're just so nice. <laughs> I don't have to change my voice to do an impersonation of myself, but I chose to. Wait. <laughs> 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 um can you tell us is there any significance to uh, your pumpkin tattoo on your chest. Uh, well, Halloween is my favorite day of the year. And I, uh, I've just, I, I have my, I got my first tattoo, which was, uh, my, my name on my right arm. Uh, so I don't forget it. But like after that, I was like, you know, I want to get something else that's important to me, not just my name. And, I found out I had a friend who I went to high school with who owned her own tattoo parlor. And so I was like, yeah, I, uh, I trust you. You want to give me some fresh tats? And she got me the one on my arm and the one on my chest. And uh, it's just it's just because I love Halloween. Uh, it's, my, it's one of my favorite childhood memories is hanging out with my mom watching scary movies. Uh, so I was like, you know what? I'm going to represent for the rest of forever. And the other um, um, tattoo is your um, uh, your band, uh, Bourbon Missile Crisis, correct? That's correct. Um, I uh, I got my Bourbon Missile Crisis tattoo on my left arm. I got uh, my name in. The, okay, my my tattoo with my name is actually a font created by my friend as a graphic designer based on the logo for the DC Comics character Lobo my favorite comic book and I've got a tattoo on my shin, which is the worst tattoo I've ever seen in my life. Um, I got a Friday the 13th tattoo on my shin of a razor blade and I got it two hours, approximately two hours before my first ever death match. Oh no. And first of all, don't do that. No. Like, <laughs> it stung so bad. It was just because, like, all that sweat and all that mat and all that other stuff was getting into it. I covered it up as best I could, but, you know, you can only do so much. Right. And so, like, I was, like, had my leg in the sink using the dial soap after the match. Um, and also, uh, it's just, it was the worst tattoo I've ever seen. It's so terrible. I, uh... <laughs> Every time I look at it, I laugh, and it reminds me not to make bad decisions. It just—it was. I'm glad it was a Friday the Thirteenth tattoo because if it would have cost more than twenty dollars, I'd have been very pissed. Um, but still, I would have—I would have gone back and demanded my money back if it weren't, you know, basically free. I don't remember a switchblade, um, a, a razor blade being a part of Friday the Thirteenth. It's not, um, but on see when you do the Friday the Thirteenth tattoos at most places, they have the 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 sheet, and they're like pick one of these. And my friends and I uh, uh, wanted to do something a while back uh, because of the passing of Scott Hall, and so we were we kept talking about like adding razor blades to our gear. Um, because we all were fans of uh, Razor Ramon. And so we're like, you know what? We see these razor blades. We've been talking about getting razor gear. It's $20, and it's going to be on my leg. That's a pretty cool tattoo. And if you look really, really hard, the blood coming from the razor blade tattoo is in the shape of a 13. 
But you have to look really, really hard because this homie didn't shave it at all. Uh, he, he, no shading anywhere in the tattoo. It looks, the lines are all uneven. So that's why it was my Friday the 13th tattoo. Um, Jen actually has the exact same tattoo on her leg because that's who I got it with. And funny story, hers actually looks good. <laughs> okay. Yeah. Her artist knew what the hell he was doing, so her <laughs> tattoo doesn't suck. And I was like, oh, what it would be nice to have that tattoo instead of this one. Do you want to trade legs? So, yeah, that's the story of, uh, hey, that could have been my crazy road story. Like, uh, it could have. <laughs> yeah, remember we got tattoos right before a death match because we were trying to get sepsis? <laughs> Is there any um, uh, thoughts of getting new ink in the future? I would love to get some more tattoos. Uh, I want to. I definitely want to get tattoos, both my mom and my dad. Uh, I've already started drawing up the designs, but honestly, like until it's right, I don't want to get it. It it took me. I was in my twenties before I landed on a, a tattoo design I liked. And I'm just one of those people, um, and it's not like this is the right choice or the wrong choice. It's just my choice. Right. Um, is that if I'm not really happy with something, I don't want it tattooed on me. Right. And, and um, the only time I ever went against that rule gave me the worst tattoo I've ever seen. So uh, yeah, I decided until I'm absolutely happy with it, I'm going to wait uh i told my mom that and she's just like oh that's so sweet it can be anything which means she's telling me hurry up and get that tattoo so i can see it um <laughs> yeah she's like oh yeah well while i'm still here you should get that tattoo wow. you know <laughs> <I'm under. laughs> so my dad's my dad tell my dad you went for him my dad's just like why <laughs> all right oh ah touche and then, of course, I need to get a tattoo representing every cat that I've ever owned, which is – we've had plenty of cats through the family, but there have only been four cats that were specifically my cats. Like, these are nobody else's. So I have to get their little cat faces tattooed, I think, on my – either my shoulder or my thigh, because those are two – that's where you put cat heads, right? Right. Yeah, of course. I don't know. I didn't – I didn't. I didn't read the book on tattoos, but I'm pretty sure that's correct. Yeah, for sure. Okay. See, I'm glad. Yeah, that's why I asked you. You're the expert. Yes. Ask somebody with absolutely no tattoos. Where to get a tattoo? <laughs> <laughs> exactly. Oh yeah. Honestly, because those who can't do teach. There you go. Yeah. Are you jealous that I was able to talk myself into that? <laughs> <laughs> right. Yeah. Can you um, can you tell us about Bourbon Missile Crisis? Oh sure, Bourbon Missile Crisis was a band that I was in uh, in the early 2010s. It's been a long time. Uh, we were a, we were an underground metal band that was inspired by my guitarist love of Chicago style blues. He loved like uh, southern rock bands. Like basically, Bourbon Missile Crisis sounded like uh, a, a mixture of the Almond Brothers band and Metallica is the best way I could describe it. Okay. Um, and it was very uh, loud, and obnoxious, and yeah, it was it was a really good time. We have uh, our YouTube page never came down, and boy, you got to see it. Uh, I had something of uh, a lifestyle change right after I left Bourbon Missile Crisis. But when I was in Bourbon Missile Crisis, I at one point weighed over 400 pounds. Wow. And so I was like running out of breath on stage. So I cut a little bit of weight to about, I got down to about 350. <laughs> And then as low as 320. And then after that, I just, uh, after I left Burrow Missile Crisis and, and quit smoking uh, two packs of cigarettes a day, I decided to instead uh, get in shape and learn to fight. And, you know, that's how 
like that's the yada 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 into me joining wrestling school. But yeah, when I was in Bird Missile Crisis, it was just a really nice outlet. Being being in a metal band is a great place to yell and scream and talk about your thoughts and feelings and dreams. Um, I get. Like, I know it's also about like uh, drinking booze and getting chicks and stuff like that, but don't let like anybody lie to you. People who do stuff like uh, any art, like pro wrestling or heavy metal, hip hop, um, street painters, it's really because you have something inside you that you just can't get out and you just can't communicate it any other way. And yeah, at the time, I really, really needed to yell and have a good time with large crowds of people. And we never even recorded a studio album. We just recorded live from our shows and just sold it at our shows, like acting like one of those uh, old punk bands in the in like the in the seventies. We're just like, yep, you just heard us record this right now. Come buy it from us. <laughs> that's the only place you're going to hear it again. Well, that's very right metal. Yeah, uh, we were doing the, the tapes out of the trunk. Um, and no, it was it was a great time. And uh, uh, I'm really, really glad that I got to uh, live that life. It was, it was like, it was a lifetime ago. Uh, but that was like the, the coolest five years uh, was just being in that band in that garage and chain smoking and chugging the whiskey and yelling at each other. <laughs> well, uh, all things considered... Um, will, is there a potential of getting the band back together? Nah, honestly, we, um, none of us are really glory day guys. Uh, plus, uh, we're all off getting married now. Uh, the drummer went on to get his master's in education. Um, the rhythm guitarist like owns a owns like I think he owns and like run, owns and operates a few like shops up in Oregon. I don't know what they're called. Uh, the lead guitarist is uh, has a family and is like working for a software company, <laughs> and the bass player also is like now married with kids. So, in the time of being like young rowdy metalheads is way behind us. <laughs> like. <laughs> Which is okay, honestly. Sometimes, like sometimes, there's just a something happens a moment in time, and I'm really glad we got to live that moment in time. And but right now, my 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 all my moments are just for starting up my uh, my new family with uh, with Brittany. That's uh, that's the woman I keep talking about, Brittany, my my wife, and uh, just bringing, uh, bringing some, uh, wrestling into the world, trying to make people happy that way and expressing myself through a little bit of blood and guts is, uh, is more important to me now than music, but I always have music, you know, like I, I'm a very, I'm very star Lord esque. I'm always listening to music. I'm always, I always have songs going on around me. Um, but yeah, playing music, that's done. I got it. I got the tattoo and now I'm good. <laughs> <laughs> well, that's a great segue into our next question. The colossal question. Let's sure. start making a movie about you. Every movie has a soundtrack. What would be the first three songs on your movie soundtrack? The first three songs on my movie soundtrack. Okay, I'll play this game. Um, <laughs> dang, this is a rough one. Uh, see, the first one would have to be... Uh, dang, it's like, if I'm a metalhead, but I don't really have a lot of crazy songs in my heart, the first song would easily be uh, uh, Kiss from a Rose by Seal. Okay. That song has been very important to all my friends that I've known since. Ah, jeez, I was like a kid. We uh, every time we have a function, we all karaoke that song together. <laughs> um, so from the Batman Forever soundtrack, an underrated movie. It's not. It's exactly rated, but still, yes. I love that song. <laughs> uh, then uh, my favorite song is uh, "Yellow Lead Better." Okay. And um, hmm, give me give me a moment to think about the last one, because like ah, 
this that's hard. Like I, they, I honestly, first off, let me say, hats off and kudos to you. I have <laughs> never, I've never been asked that before, or anything even like this. So I'm pretty impressed. Um, what would you like to keep all uh, just on their toes? I will see. Last time, okay. Here's the thing about doing uh about doing interviews is usually they hit you with something crazy like uh name uh name your top eight favorite wrestling managers. I'm like, oh no, and then you forget every wrestling match you've ever seen in your life. <laughs> and I'm like, don't ask me that, because then like as soon as the interview is over, you're like, I forgot Mr. Fuji, and then you like throw something across the room. <laughs> right. Uh, uh no, it's uh see I was stalling for time. It's going to be the Ronettes, uh <laughs> Be My Baby. That's gonna be the song. Okay. That's, that's song. uh that that's the song that uh when I bought the ring that I proposed to Brittany with, that's a song that was playing. Oh and um I was trying to choose between that and uh, Nothing Else Matters by Metallica. <laughs> <laughs> well, they could both be in there. I only limit it to three, but you could have as many songs as you'd like. You don't want to do that, man. We're going to be here all day. <laughs> I need Peace Sells by Megadeth because that was my faction song. Uh, I'm going to need... Uh, my, You know, the first song I used to walk out to in wrestling was uh, You've Really Got a Hold on Me by Smokey Robinson. <laughs> wow. <laughs> because nobody else had a song like that. And it's I'm sure if you go back on my social media, I have at least one or two uh, videos of me walking out to that music uh, on uh, Instagram. And you'll see, it doesn't make any sense when you hear it now, but when you see me come out to that song, you're like, oh, yeah, this it, this works. Um, so yeah, oh my gosh, I love to, this is great, this is like, let me just, hats off to, that's the best question I've been asked, because it actually made me think. Now that we got the soundtrack down, yeah, it's time to go to casting. Of Who course. Who plays Bovey, and you can't say yourself because you are legally obligated to make a Stanley S. cameo. That's true. All right. See, the thing is, is that uh, I'm a big fan of farce and absurd humor. I'm an absurdist. Okay. So I'm going to say that I am played by Daniel Day-Lewis, my favorite actor. Oh, yeah. <laughs> even though he is many, many years older than me, he will be playing me even as a teenager. Well, that's uh, why we have CGI. <laughs> that's right. It's, it's, it's It doesn't look that bad anymore. It used to look much worse. Right. <laughs> All right, Daniel Day-Lewis. Yeah, it's, perfect um, casting. Now every movie has a supporting cast. Who All right. Who would be three people significant to you and your story, and who would play them? Okay, um... Uh, well, obviously, the first most important person to me is Brittany, and she will be played by Nicole Kidman. Okay. <laughs> because Brittany dressed up as Nicole Kidman from the AMC uh, ads for Halloween this year, and she did flawlessly. <laughs> um, let see here, and I guess... Uh, so I have to have my mom be played by Sally Field. Okay. Uh, who everyone probably knows from the Amazing Spider-Man franchise is Aunt May. Uh, but I know her as, uh, everyone else, you know, Forrest Gump's mom. The and, one, I believe, as well. Yep. And who else? Oh, yeah, Flying Nun. Yeah, good job. Uh, <laughs> see. And then... I guess uh, who I don't know. I, I want someone to. I want someone like uh, my. I want my dad to be played by Carl Weathers. Okay, I did that. My dad. My dad um, doesn't look a thing like Carl Weathers, uh, but I just want to see Carl Weathers be in the movie because I love him, 
And so, <laughs> and yeah, and yeah, that that's my choices. I like these choices. Um, Pedro Pascal will play Chris Nasty. Uh, Jin will be played by Rhea Ripley, making her debut as an actress. Like I've got all these. I got it all planned out. <laughs> Like I just said, the one, the one I'm struggling with was my folks because I want to make sure they're honored well. Right. And then, but then I thought about it. And I decided that they need to be just like me and also be played by people who are look nothing like them. Right. I mean, uh, so, it was starting to sound like a Lincoln uh, cast reunion with Sally Field and Daniel Day Lewis. That's right. <laughs> but now he's in with Nicole Kidman. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, Nicole Kidman forever. <laughs> All right. Um, either way, um, I never knew I needed to see Real Ripley with uh, Daniel Day Lewis, and that makes it a fantastic movie. Um, that, right? This movie, that movie kicks ass already. They didn't hurry up and make this movie. And you can pre order the tickets now. That's right. Um, that movie is sponsored by Player One Coffee. And uh, Rogue Energy. <laughs> what was it going to be? Maybe you know, like they always have those those hidden Coke bottles in movies. Is yeah. this going to be some Player One coffee? I'm just going to be sipping that. But the logo <laughs> facing the camera the whole time. And now, of course, not me. It's Daniel Day-Lewis as me. Oh, no. You're with Daniel Day-Lewis because that's your cameo. Oh, yeah. That's, <laughs> I was going to look right into the camera. Speak as monotonous as possible. Here you go, top tier Bovi. You're my favorite wrestler. <laughs> All right, on to the most controversial of subjects: okay. pineapple on pizza. What's your stance? Honestly, I don't see what the controversy is. If pineapple on pizza, I don't like. If pineapple is on pizza, I will eat it. If they like, it's like uh, some people absolutely swear by it, and some people just cannot, they cannot believe you would do that. Right. But pizza, you know, it's just pizza, sweet and salty and sweet and spicy go together. So pineapple kind of works. I just don't like warm pineapple. I like to eat fresh pineapple or pineapple chunks out of like the little plastic containers from the supermarket. That's how I like my pineapple. So then people are like, oh, I grilled a giant pineapple and put it on a burger. I'm like, but don't. It's like it tastes better, not warm. But if it's there, I mean, like, who the fuck am I? <laughs> like, yeah. like, like, I'm too good for this. I will have a different pizza. Like, that's, I feel like that's arrogance that makes people really hate pineapple on pizza. <laughs> Not to call anyone out here, but just saying. You should. If that's one of your biggest problems in your life, you really need to examine your life. So you're kind of, you lean more towards anti rather than pro. Um, I'm, you know what? I'm just, we'll just say this. I stand here being just a really great dude. <laughs> like that, That's how we're going to, that's how we're going to answer that one. I'm just a great dude. Not, <laughs> so. Uh, you're not upsetting the pro, and you're not upsetting the anti. <laughs> you're staying yeah. neutral. <laughs> yeah, honestly, yeah, yeah. I don't, I don't, I don't know. I'm, I will, I'm not the one to cause the issue at the party about that. Like, I honestly, I'm a fat ass. Like, I love if anchovies end up on my pizza, I eat anchovies. Um, and I know it's like, like, oh, what are you, Heathcliff? And I'm like, no, it's just, it's good. Like. Uh, I like I, I, it's just it's just extra salty pizza that day. I don't know if you, have you ever tried anchovies on pizza? I have not. It's just salt and a little bit of fish flavor. So if you don't like fish, don't do it. If you don't like extremely salty things, don't do it. But if you can eat salt and you can stand fish, you can eat anchovies on pizza. It's fine. <laughs> like it doesn't taste like anything. Um, but people are like so like oh no. no. Okay, here's one thing I won't put on my pizza. Now, here's where I am a controversial figure and everyone hates me. I do not like onions on pizza. I, I, I will actively pick them off and put them on someone else's plate. 
that's the that's where I draw. I know it's crazy. Everyone loves everyone loves onions. They love them, and I'm like, what's why? <laughs> I, I don't see the appeal. I mean, I don't feel like that's that controversial. Um, you know, onions oh. don't normally get on pizzas if I'm if I'm not mistaken. You know what? Maybe it's like a California pizza thing where you get like the chicken pizza where like are a supreme pizza out here. But all those places, they get those the big chopped pieces of like the purple onions just right on your pizza. Right. And I'm like, why would you why would you do that? Yeah. Bar this barbecue chicken pizza tastes great. Why would you ruin my life? <laughs> <laughs> The fact the fact that you put onions on my pizza means that you hate me. So I guess that, see, I told you it was the, it was I can be controversial, but for the most part, <laughs> I'll just pick them off. I won't I won't cause a scene. But if they ask me, I'll say no, thank you. So we're neutral on pineapple, but we're very anti onion. Yeah, I just I'm not an onion guy. I mean, I eat onion in, in my salsa. I like onion rings. Um, but like, but if onion is the pronounced flavor, I become, I, 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 I become anti that food. Okay. Like, oh, you want some French onion soup? No. What? <laughs> there are other things to put in soup. You know that, right? <laughs> like, you don't have to do this. This is not the French revolution. All right. We're not like, we're not like fighting out here on the battlefield. Oh, we have nothing. Uh, we have oh, we have only onions. We have those in our what? The worst French accent. <laughs> I'm sorry, the entirety of France for what I just did. <laughs> right now, all of France is pissed. <laughs> They're just like, I hope he never gets his belt back from him. <laughs> <laughs> Luckily, we don't have an audience in France yet. <laughs> See, you think you're too small, man. Someone out there, someone out there is just like waking up, like, oh, I live in Paris. A beautiful morning. I listen to wrestling with entertainment. I heard they're sponsored by Player One Coffee. And then they're going to hear my terrible French accent. They're going to be like, I hit him top tier, more like low tier, Bobby. Oh, my God. Oh my God. I'm so <laughs> That's worse than Monty Python. Oh, I don't know. I keep doing it now because I'm hoping to get it right once, so I don't sound like an idiot. But that's not what's happened. It's only gotten worse. So I'm gonna just stop. Yeah, yeah. And I always make fun of those people whenever they go to parties where they they think it's comedy like gold to do British accents at each other because they can't do it right. Right. And I just I just did that. Accents are hard. Just don't do them. Yeah. I mean. I Unless you're Daniel Day Lewis, Daniel Day Lewis can do any accent. I just can't. There you go. All right. Um, what's your spirit Pokemon? My spirit Pokemon? Yes. Oh man, um, I'm a big Machoke fan, um, but I'm gonna say uh, probably. I don't know. I like I like Hitmonchan. I like anyone. I like boxing gloves on a Pokemon. That's really funny to me. I like Hitmonlee because I like kicking. I guess I like all the ones that hit people. Um, because I you know, I fight for money on the weekends. So as you know. Yeah. Um, hmm. No, I guess I guess I'm gonna go with that. I'm gonna go with. Uh, dang. Why? See, you can't, these are out of nowhere. You, 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 <laughs> Screw it. I I'm Meowth. Let's be real. I'm Meowth for sure. Meowth, that's right. That's right. That's who I actually am. Now, uh, we love the late great Tracy Smothers on the show. Do you know the acronym for Thug? T H U G. For Thug? T H U G. All right. Take me to school. T is for terrible. H is for hell, U is for ugly, and G is for jail. Cause a dog can't spell. <laughs> oh man. Yes, we love. We're the, all we're all learning today, kids. We love the late great Tracy Smothers trying to keep the memory alive on the show. 
Thank you. Now, uh, the weirdest question you'll be asked on a wrestling interview, hopefully, um, would you ever consider wrestling a rock? Not Dwayne Johnson, not the country, an actual physical rock. Well, would I wrestle a rock? Absolutely. You know what? I would. I love nature, and I feel like I would put nature over. Easily. I'd be like, all right, kid, let's go out there, do your thing. What's your finish, brother? <laughs> um, no, that, that's an interesting question. Uh, depends on the rock, I guess. I mean, this rock is the world champion. The rock is the world champion. All right, so it's gold, not pyrite. That's what you're telling me. Um, no, that's a... Um, I mean, like, <laughs> I don't know minerals. <laughs> Pyrite is known in the geology world as fool's gold. It's that shiny rock that looks sparkly. Yeah, I just did a nerd thing. I uh, I just outed myself as reading uh, on my free time. <laughs> it's like one of those garden rocks. Garden rocks? Yeah, definitely. I would definitely uh, wrestle a garden rock for sure. Okay. I mean, I hope I hope I can beat it, but like every time I'm ready to do yard work and dig something, all of a sudden there's just a rock there, and I'm like, Damn it, because you get out the little tiny shovel with like the little thing with like the three clamps to get it because you can't use the big shovel because you'll tear up the flowers you just planted. For sure, I would fight a rock. I'd beat a rock's fucking ass if I'm a power, to be honest. It would hurt, though, because it's a rock. Well, just for context, there is this wrestler named Psycho Mike that wrestled an actual rock for over 15 minutes. In a tungsten man match, that's an arm man match that lasts for two weeks. Oh my god. Yes. Yeah, or, well, shit, I don't, that's innovation. <laughs> I think, you see, when you, when you, whenever you hear things like this, you begin to understand why we get confused when anybody says they don't like wrestling. <laughs> Because there really is something for everyone. Anyone out there says there's nothing for me in wrestling, you just haven't found it yet. Or, or you're you're a contrarian dickbag and like you just won't admit that you found the thing. Because come on, yeah. like, you got these forty year old men. Wrestling's dumb. I'm like, is it? <laughs> it's like I know you're lying to me. I know. I know there's a match out there for you. You know it too. Quit lying. This is why your this is why your wife left. This is why your kids don't call you anymore, sir. <laughs> wow. <laughs> <laughs> oh, no. That's, it's horrible. Poor. I feel bad for this hypothetical guy. I hope he gets his life together. On a more serious note, where do you see yourself in five years? Where do I see myself in five years? Yes. Well, that's easy. Uh, I see me and my wife. Uh, we're going to be running our own uh, watering hole. Um, I've been in customer service as my side gig. I've actually worked in customer service jobs on and off for almost two decades. Um, so where I see myself in five years is owning a bar. And I'm going to be owner and operator of that bar. And it's going to not only serve drinks, but also it's going to serve a purpose uh, for raising money and awareness for important social issues in the community. That's I'm calling my shot right now. That's going to be me in five years. All right. And what is a match people should go out of their way to see that that shows off what you are all about? A match that shows what I'm all about? Yes. Um. <laughs> uh, well, I've got a couple off the top of my head. Uh, the best, well, I, I hate to say it because I don't, I didn't win. Spoilers, guys, I have to tell you the truth. But my uh, my street fight with Chris Nasty, uh, that shows a lot about who I am. Uh, I uh, it shows me being a strong boy and a funny boy and a guy who can bleed really well. Uh, 
I have to tell you guys, uh, I know you're all huge, huge fans and love me so much, but the ending doesn't go so good. But just watch anyways for me. So that way I didn't get, well, you'll see, uh, at the end uh, for nothing. And uh, it's that match. And then if you wanted a backup where I also lose, it's me against uh, Moizilla uh, at Santino Brothers. Actually, it was the fight night before Christmas last year. It was a Christmas fight. So those those two matches are uh, matches that I have uploaded online. And then I'm just going to keep plugging my own matches. Uh, then this year for my birthday, if you want to see me bleed a lot, I wrestled Judge Joe Dredd at Crimson Crown Wrestling in Los Angeles. <laughs> it was a match based around my birthday. And that one is for people who are okay with blood. I think um, Joe broke about 25 uh, light bulbs on me in that match. Ouch. <laughs> yeah, well, you know, it was still a good birthday. Um, and we can, we, had, find, we can find these on YouTube? Um, well, you can find, hmm, I see. You can find those first two on YouTube. The third one, you have to go to, uh, like, the uh, independentwrestling.tv, you know? Oh, IWTV. Uh, yeah, IWTV. Uh, that's Crimson Crown. Uh, and it's the, the Friday Night Brawl show, August 18th, 2023. I know that date perfectly because it was my birthday. <clears throat> so those, those are matches where you could see me getting bloody and having a good time. And uh, the first two matches, um, I will find them on YouTube, and I will uh, get a link to them, and I will put it in the description of the video below, but on YouTube and CastBox, for anybody that hasn't seen them, wants to see them, wants to re-see them after this interview. Excellent. Hey, that's good work. Thank you. Absolutely. And since we are nearing the conclusion of this interview, we are wrestling with... The eight questions of Doom. Oh, okay, cool. Let's do it. This is our speed round, our bonus round, the round where we see who you really are. Are you ready? Yeah, of course. Excluding yourself, greatest wrestler of all time. Mick Foley. Worst wrestler. <laughs> you didn't say excluding me, so I'm going to say me. No, I will not accept that answer. <laughs> <laughs> the worst wrestler of all time? Uh, let's see here. Well, it's supposed to be a speed round, but I really hate burying people. <laughs> I can give you the uh, default answer if you'd like. What's the default answer? You have chosen Eva Marie. <laughs> I've seen worse than Eva Marie. <laughs> I think I might be worse. Than, she went on, She made it on television, and I didn't. <laughs> I, I, see, that's uh, – I know, man. Honestly, I'm going to be the first person to fail. I, uh, I refuse an answer because I won't bury people. All right. Well, you have chosen Eve for Marie, so that, that is your answer. <laughs> you know what? It's your show. Your main event in WrestleMania for the World Championship, who is your opponent? I know my favorite uh, is Mick Foley, so this one's going to be controversial. My uh, my opponent is going to be. Mm, no, I don't want to do this. My opponent is going to be John Cena. All right. If you could... like, uh, yeah, because like, uh, John Cena and I will be wrestling one on one to do who wears the jorts best in the match. Oh yeah. Loser has to take them off. Well, it's, that's, that's very likely to be me, but that's okay. I'm used to taking off my pants in a large crowd. <laughs> if you could come out to anyone's entrance music, past or present, who would it be? <sighs> oh, my gosh. Uh, this is going to come out of nowhere, but probably my favorite wrestling theme, well, uh, tied for uh, – Tied for first is two is either the Acolytes music, I love that song, or uh, Gangrel's music. I fucking love the Broods music. Oh, yeah. 
I just uh, I just worked a show with Gangrel last week, oh, wow. and and that's that song still pops. And I was in the locker room just like break dancing. I was just like, oh yeah, <laughs> banging and banging. Finish the sentence. K Fabe is K Fabe is fun. We would have also accepted. Taste great on toast. <laughs> oh, I love that. Squash. Vegetable or fruit? Is a squash a vegetable or fruit? A squash? Isn't this isn't it a gourd? It is not. I don't know shit. Uh I must uh, I'll just say vegetable. This is easier. It is indeed a fruit. See, you were setting me up. You knew you were going to get me with that one. <laughs> you had a, not me a 50-50 chance. <laughs> well, I made it worse by getting it wrong twice. <laughs> well, it has, uh, it has seeds. It's tomato logic. I'll take it. Listen, I'm not a botanist. So if someone tells me I'm wrong about something, I can accept it. So I accept I was wrong about the squash. Well, you are a part of Squash Squad now, and that means a hell of a lot more. You know what? Thank you. New Japan wrestler Tai Chi. His ring gear gets smaller every year, revealing more of himself to the world. My question, what is the appropriate trunks to budget ratio for ring gear? Honestly, um, for the safety of your sponsorships try to make it so people really can't see your butthole but if people want to wear just a thong out there well, i mean like rikishi's badass like he wore a thong every week i don't think i don't think it really matters um just depending on what show you are if there's going to be a bunch of kids in the crowd Probably try to wear a little bit more. Uh, if it's like a, if it's an adult show, I, I don't even care if people don't wear pants. Like whatever, <laughs> like it's it's just a butt. Like once once you become a grown up, it's just a butt, and it's like any anybody's like any part of them is just a body part until you put a meaning to it. Like some people find feet really attractive. I, I, I don't care either way, but some people do. But until that enters the conversation, they're just feet. You know what I mean? Yeah. So if someone has some butt cheeks out, that's fine. Just, you know, maybe uh, keep the kids away from that show because, uh, like, they should be a little bit older where they can understand that concept I said about body parts just being body parts until they can understand that, that concept either side of that discussion. They don't need to be near it. Right. Uh, but I don't care. A butt's a butt. All right. And the last question, the main event, the thing everybody wants to know. Have you ever had a conversation with a stranger in a supermarket about Darby Allen? A conversation in a supermarket with anybody about Darby Allen? A stranger. A stranger. Um. <laughs> yes. <laughs> <laughs> okay, and I know that's really. Hard. I, I don't know why you're asking this. I'm sure you'll explain it in a second. Um, but uh, someone saw me with a a giant uh like a bruise on my face. And they were jokingly asking me if I got into a fight. And what happened was I got hit in the eye with a chair when I was wrestling in Mexico. And I bruised up my eye really bad. Mm. And so they're like, "Like, where, did you expect that to happen? I was like, Psh, man, nobody expects anything. Um, the first time I ever saw wrestling uh, at, like a, at a smaller venue, I saw a guy named Darby Allen and his tag team partner uh, Priscilla Kelly wrestle against uh, Doomfly, and Priscilla Kelly like, got her lip busted open, and it just these things just happen. 
and this is a stranger, and they had no idea what I was talking about. But I can say that honestly, <laughs> yes, Darby Allen came up in a conversation because I was like, I don't care. I have no spatial awareness about wrestling. As soon as someone's like, as soon as I have an opportunity to bring up pro wrestling, I start talking about it. <laughs> I don't know if that's a common answer, um, but yeah, I have mentioned him before, and I know this story. It, this was a fact. This did happen. Well, so anyway, does, does it? Do you think people don't talk about Darby enough? It's been a it's a running joke. Um, when AEW first started, me and my co-host. Um, we had a conversation where he was arguing with some um, AEW fans. Um, they said, you know, they've made stars in AEW. And he was like, if I go into a supermarket, nobody's going to know who Darby Allen is. Um, incredibly long story short, um, me and my co-host actually went into supermarkets and went up to random strangers and asked them if they knew who Darby Allen was. Um, nobody did. <laughs> well, wrestling, wrestling a lot, uh, is a huge, huge world, but it's a lot more niche than people think. Um, yeah. like I, weirdly, like 20 years ago, you would run into ever, a lot of people would know who Darby Allen is, but right now, there are some people where I mention the name Roman Reigns and they don't know who the hell I'm talking about. Right. And I'm like, are you fucking kidding me? He's a he's like setting records with his like his title reign. Um, he's the head of the family, and then you start pointing up for the bloodline stuff, and but they like what? So like that honestly, I mean that's not me comparing uh, two wrestlers in two different companies either. That's just a fact. Right. Uh, um, I, I I run into people every I. Uh, not about two of my 20 co-workers at my side job have ever actually seen me wrestle. <laughs> wow. <laughs> because for the most part, people are not aware of how awesome wrestling is until you drag them to it, and then they care about it. And you're uh, right about that. And uh, so, like, but that that is a good benchmark. Um that's but that's like a, it's unfortunately not just a telling sign about AEW as wrestling as a whole. Um, there's just so much more instant entertainment in people's hands right now that like wrestling uh, wrestling has to keep coming up with new tricks to get people to watch. Oh yeah. But you know these things are cyclical. In like five years, when they do their retro uh, Attitude Era shirts again at like hot topic all these kids are like oh yeah yeah i love stone cold steve austin and like even though they've never they've never but you mentioned like the him driving like uh, all the crazy vehicles and all his antics they have no idea what you're talking about right. but they still bought the shirt that's when everyone's gonna be like yeah i've always loved darby allen like <laughs> Like until then, just those of us who are in wrestling or already do watch wrestling, we know who Darby Allen is, and like that's just the sad reality of it. Right, and uh, I've only I've had conversations in supermarkets but about other wrestlers, but the one that comes to mind was Triple H and Hulk Hogan came up in a conversation. Yeah, I mean Hulk Hogan uh, and Triple H were like uh, both around. Like Triple H was a. Uh, was like it was the constant like main event guy like with DX and uh, and it, with the McMahon Helmsley era and all the other stuff during the Attitude era, so everyone recognizes his face what? because like that's when the wrestling boom happened um, all over again. And Hulk Hogan, um, whether you love him or you hate him, is synonymous with wrestling. If if you mention wrestling, they people will say like, oh, you mean like Hulk Hogan or oh man, you mean like the Undertaker. Right. There's just a couple of guys who, for the rest of forever, their picture is going to be synonymous with wrestling. Um, but all these these new generation guys, unfortunately, they came in at a time where we are inundated with fresh faces in wrestling. So it's going to take a year or two longer for people to actually catch on to any new star. Right. Which is fine. Yeah. You know. You, sorry, Darby, you're going to have to take some more bumps. <laughs> I apologize to the guy who uh, has obviously a lot more money than me. He's like, whatever, whoever you are. 
Ironically enough, I have asked Dorby that question, that very question, and he did not have an answer for me as well. So, um, you are one up on Dorby on that. Oh, I have brought up Darby in a conversation in a stranger supermarket. <laughs> All right, well, let Darby know that that somebody's talking about him, and it's me. <laughs> and that is the correct answer. Yes, I knew I'd get one of these right. <laughs> And that will in, uh, conclude this interview. Thank you so much for coming on and doing this with me. Oh, thank you for having me. It's been a blast. Absolutely. And once again, where can we find things, all things, all things Bovi on uh, social media and merchandise? You can find me uh, on Instagram at Bovi underscore top tier. You can find me on Twitter because I'm not calling it X at Steve Bovey. You can find me the participation champion on TikTok. And I also have a pro wrestling tease uh, under the name Bovey. There's only one, there's only one top tier Bovey on pro wrestling tease. You don't have to, if there's, <laughs> if another Bovey popped up, I'll be surprised. <laughs> and you don't even have to type it into your Google machine. All of the links to all his social media will be in the description of the video below, both on YouTube and CastBox. Simply click the link, a new tab will appear on whatever device you are on. Um, you have no excuse. Buy a damn short. That's true. Thank you for I like the way you put that. You don't have an excuse. Buy a damn shirt. Hell yeah. Support indie wrestling. Yes. Thank you. Yes. That's the most important thing. Even if you if you listen to this interview and decide you hate my guts, get revenge on me by buying another indie wrestler shirt. <laughs> the link for Jim and, and uh, uh, Chris's uh, pro wrestling tees will be in the description. <laughs> I also sell a I still sell Vibrance shirts on my pro wrestling tees, and that portion of that money goes to Jim Savani. <laughs> <laughs> That'll yeah. teach me give Chris go. money. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> of course, thank you for listening. If you like what we're doing, please like, subscribe, comment, but on YouTube and Castbox. This was, of course, sponsored by Rogue Energy and also Player One Coffee. Were you you're setting me up, right? Yes. <laughs> Let's see if I remember. I see. Uh, I don't have that many head injuries. Eventually, I remember. <laughs> And, of course, join us uh, tomorrow as we uh, interview Marie Valdomina and every Tuesday and Wednesday for new incredible interviews. Follow us so at Wrestling with E, both on X, Instagram, and Dread. Uh, follow me personally at GMC993. All right, um, Bofi, when I say wrestling wit, you say entertainment, okay? You got it. For our special guest, Bofi, Calico Yacht, Scooter Dust, I'm James J, and this has been Wrestling With Entertainment. Big wow. Hey, folks, this is the Colossal Mike Law, and you are listening to Wrestling With Entertainment. Enjoy the show. Support these guys. We appreciate it very much. We'll see you at ringside.